Okay, so before we get started, a little background of what we're working with. So this is Timeline JS, and it's part of the Night Lab. It's a division of, or it's a community at Northwestern's University. And there's a suite of tools that are used for visual communicators, storytellers, and specifically journalists. So out of this, there is a few different things. The core six tools that they deploy is Juxtapose, Storyline, Scene, Story Map, Sound Site, and Timeline JS. So when we're looking at this, when we say the night lab, it's really this lab of tools. And this video is only really focusing on one timeline. So if you go to the timeline tool, there's only four things we really need to know to get started making a timeline in Timeline JS. Now, the first thing is you need to have a Google account. Now, whether it's your personal one or the one that you have at WWU is totally up to you. But what we're gonna be needing is this spreadsheet template. The second part of this is once we have that timeline sheet, we're gonna be eventually publishing it to the web. Now, the thing I wanna point out is recently within the last couple of months, if you're used to doing the old way of doing Timeline JS, please note that there is an update of what you need to do to publish this before it'll work within the Timeline JS format. The third part, real simply, is that when once we have it, we will come back to this very same site and put that publish link in here. And this is actually how you get that published page of your timeline. And then the fourth part is sharing it, whether it's an embed or you send the actual link to Canvas, your LMS or whatever. So first step, and let's go ahead and get that spreadsheet. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm already signed in, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of the spreadsheet. And just like that, we now have the spreadsheet in our Google Sheets. And from here, what we can do is we can send this to our colleagues to go ahead and, and collaborate. So if you're working within a group, this is the point where you'd be able to say, all right, I got this. Put in your, your, your colleagues email addresses, either through WWU or if they're using their personal, put it in here and give them edit rights. And that way they can join you live and you all can put in your research into the spreadsheet. Now, once we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and use a different one that I've got just so that you can see a more filled out version. I wanna kind of look, take a look at some of these columns that are in here. So first things first is that the year, the month, the day, and the time. This is going to be the points on your timeline. So if I were to pull this one up into a timeline that I've done, this is what we see. It's just a, a makeshift one on cultural history of fashion, and we can tell we have a few different things that's going on. You have points on a timeline. You have ranges on a timeline. And then also what you may want to do is what I call phases. So phases are kind of in a hierarchy You have phases, which might be um, a phase of fashion in this case, or perhaps um, a larger period where something is in this case in vogue. That might be a bigger span that you'd be covering. And you may want to mark something that is a, a range of time that impacted perhaps a sub range inside or a point inside. So think of it as a hierarchical. You can have these overlap, as you can tell within mine, and these show different periods uh, within the same time, whether it's a decade, a century, or whatever, of what you're trying to demonstrate. Now, all of these things also, when we click on it, it goes into this sliding slideshow type of thing. So if we look at the content that we can put into our timeline, it's not just a bunch of dates. Um, we can put in here, for instance, a photo and link, and these photos have to be linked from somewhere else on the web. So this could be from a source uh, or from your own Google Drive if you're doing it yourself, creating your own content. You can then give it metadata such as um, your title, which will also show up in the, the actual timeline itself. The other thing that I, I like to point out is maybe you can put a general, a kind of generality of, of what this is that you're describing. So for instance, um, this big in style might be a phase that I'm describing, and I might be putting it within a marked range of, for instance, 1770 forward, um, which might carry through the entire timeline or an entire uh, phase that you're trying to describe. So instead of just photos, we can also do photos and a little bit of text. The more text that you get over here, it'll kind of scroll. Now bear in mind also, if you're doing this as embed, if you're in journalism, you have to bear in mind that this will scale. So bear in mind that you, um, whatever you write here, you might wanna keep a little bit more concise uh, as opposed to being a long form piece. Kind of keep that in your article. You can also do YouTube or SoundCloud. So if you have any visual or audio media that you're trying to put in within a timeline, you'll get this little bit different gallery view where you can actually get a playable push button right back to YouTube 
or SoundCloud that will allow you to embed this video into your timeline. And this is really important because if you're working with the DMC and you've been working in creating your own video, you can put it up into your YouTube and then using Timeline JS in this next part that I'll show you back into the, the boring spreadsheet part, I'll show you how you can put that link in and it'll show up here. So now that I've got that out of the way of kind of the different contents that you can use, you can use audio from SoundCloud, video, photos, text, Again, you want to keep it concise because what you're showing is how all of these events impacted the topic that you're researching linearly. So to get all of this achieved, the one that I showed you just now, this is actually that spreadsheet. So you can see that I have my, my ranges, for instance, my year in this case was 1788, the end year. So you have the red and the gray. Red is the, uh, the kind of the start year. The gray is the, the output of the year. So from 1788, month November, day first, to 1796 12 15. Now, I will say even though that Night Lab says that you don't you shouldn't leave any grid uh, or any cells blank, a few things that you can leave blank um, that doesn't really impact um, time. I I usually kind of just drop that uh, unless you know exactly the the day of the month, the month of the year, the year of your life type of a thing. Um, and so that won't impact your timeline at all. And also, if for instance, if they said the spring, so you might be thinking, you know, 3 4 5 um, is the, the months of spring, depending on your location. Um, that will help you shore up your timeline because if you just put, you know, the first, that covers the most of a, of a, of a, of a piece of time. And so if you put it as close to you know relatively, it will shore up your timeline to be a little bit more accurate, even if you don't have ac the most accurate information. So that's your, your start and your stop point. Uh, display date. So this is something different. So for instance, um, this period right here, the United States Declaration of Independence, um, perhaps this, this, star, uh, this whole time frame, um, most notably is known for 1776, but it took a long time for the entire thing to actually happen. So we would actually put within the year, the start year and stop year of perhaps everything, including the, uh, the Revolutionary War, and then notably 1776. And what this will do within our timeline it shows me the span of time on my, my timeline, but when I click on this, this point reference is really focusing on 1776 in the timeline. So this is a way that you can show two different pieces of data within the same part of time. So now that we've kind of gone through how to set up the points and kind of how you can show like phases and, and ranges, you, and, and just the display of what you want to have. In this display date, you can also put in as much as you want. And this is how I was able to do the 1770 forward. So if you're kind of showing a longer piece of time, or if you're trying to show a, a, a broader phase, this is a way that you could describe it and carry it through your entire timeline. Um, your headline, that's fairly self-explanatory. That, that would be the big black bold uh, words that are on your screen. We also have our text, which again, you can write as much as you want. Notice that you are writing it in Excel, which also gets back to my point. If you keep it concise, again, people are gonna see this on a wide range of screens. You kinda wanna be as, as truncated as possible. Media, you're gonna copy and paste the exact link, HTTP, HTTPS, into the media link part. Now, this could be, like I said, SoundCloud. You can see a SoundCloud link right there. You can use YouTube or you can just right mouse click on a photo that is um, somewhere on the web, or if you've published something from your Google Drive, you can use it and share it directly into here as well. Now, if you do hijack something from the internet, so for instance, I have this photo from The Guardian. This is gonna be probably part of most of your assignments, and it's also just a good practice to get into. You have to give credit where credit is due. If your faculty requires citations such as MLA, APA, or whatever, you may want to do that here as well, or if you're just doing a simple um, public domain or Creative Commons, you'll be able to put that information right here and it will show. You can see that this was a public domain image that I sourced and this is the, this is the description of this graphic that I have. And so that is what those two columns are able to do. So that really covers everything that you'll be using within your timeline. If you forget what you're doing, or if you need to know what you have to have for it to work within the timeline, if you click at any of the tabs, you'll see that it'll say that it's required, if it's optional, 
or what the column will do. So for instance, if you don't remember what media does, it'll tell you what it is within the note of each of these columns. So once we have that, we, need, we now need to go through the process of publishing this to Timeline.js. So this is the part where you've already done all your collaboration and you're ready to go prime time. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that, that new sample sheet that I did and I'm gonna go ahead and go through the process. File, publish to the web. So this is what's changed in, in recent months. Instead of doing the entire document, we're gonna go ahead and do OD1. Do not copy this part yet. Instead, what we're gonna do is copy this entire thing up here. And then we're gonna go back to Timeline.js. We're gonna go ahead and put in the new URL. And if we go ahead and hit preview, you will see what the Google spreadsheet sample is down below. So that's the four phases of being able to get into and creating a timeline JS. And again, once we have this, what's great is that anything that you now do, if you went back in and started changing things within here live, it would live update with to your link to your timeline. Or if you have it embedded in your WordPress, uh, uh, WordPress post, it'll also update within your WordPress post. It updates live wherever the timeline is. And so that's what's really nice about this functionality is here's a post that I have originally when I was doing this. And if I were to do any edits to that timeline within this embed, it would show up here on my post and I don't have to go and repost things. And that's what's really nice about this tool. So that wraps up this workshop. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me through my email or through my blogs. And hopefully you are ruling time like a time lord at this point.